All right, welcome everybody to live training uh, sponsored by Space Coast Pool School. So we're gonna go ahead and get started. I'm gonna introduce everything as the sponsor of the training and then um, let our speaker jump right in in a minute. So just wanna introduce everybody. Uh, so welcome to uh, training on water reuse and environmental protection training, um, specifically with the best clear system or best clear pod system. Um, and this training is brought to you um, and hosted by Space Coast Pool School. Everybody knows I teach CPO classes, virtual in-person in Florida, I teach OSHA 10 classes. I teach a certified pool inspector course. I have a mentoring program, so you can find all that on my website at spacecoastpoolschool.com. But let's get right to our main presenter, which is Harold oh. Tapley. He's with the Best Clear System, and I'm going to go ahead and let him introduce himself to you guys. Well, good morning, everybody, or, or afternoon, depending on when you're watching this. Um, it is morning here, and uh, we're in California. And I uh, appreciate uh, you giving me the time to, to uh, show you what we got. Yep. Thank you. Um, so as the founder of Best Clear Systems, um, what kind of background experience do you have, Harold? Well, <clears throat> you know, my dad was actually a swimming pool contractor uh, back uh, starting off uh, somewhere around 1966. And uh, we became an Anthony Pools dealer. And uh, as a, a child, uh, you know, I was about eight years old. I actually met Phil Anthony, which was pretty cool. Didn't realize how cool it was back then. But, you know, now I really realize it was pretty cool. And um, grew up uh, building pools. I mean, you know, literally starting off going with my dad out on the job sites and just playing with the homeowner's kids compared to, uh, going to where we were actually digging and tying and doing plumbing and electrical and, and just getting the whole comprehension, you know, shooting the, the you know, running the nozzle on the shot tree or the guy rigs and pouring concrete. And, and, uh, and I really uh, sort of got into it about 15 years old. I, I um, uh, started running one of our concrete crews. Uh, I had I had let one of the other guys drive, <laughs> but I was actually leading the crew, and um, you know it, uh, we we were actually specializing in cool deck, uh, which a lot of people, uh, in fact, there's not hardly anybody around here anymore that does cool deck, but professional finisher for cool deck. So you know I've done that for many many years, so I know what I'm looking at. And of course, when it comes to you know taking care of of pools uh you know of course i have owned pools all my life you know my dad you know had a pool when i was a kid of course i was standing in the bottom of it as it was first started with water so you know the the uh process that we've uh, arrived at uh, it was more of a um, just i like things that are automated and that's sort of how i i uh, got to this but I guess my my final analysis of my uh, is just common sense. I think that's really my my uh, reason for for being able to do this. <laughs> awesome. So, when did you start using uh, this technology here? And tell us a little bit about it too. Yeah. Well, <clears throat> you know, we uh, we were actually at, a, at one of the um, uh, Fluidra Jandy uh, conferences. And uh, out of my peripheral hearing, I heard somebody say something about, you know, how do you like that new backwash valve? And of course, we've been installing cartridge filters for the last, you know, 15, 20, 25 years. Uh, so it sort of caught my attention. I was like, backwash valve, you know, who's, who's using a backwash valve? Um, and so I talked to my rep and uh, checked out the backwash valve and they have one that actually you can uh, apply an actuator to it. And that really piqued my interest. I was like, that means I can automate the cleaning of the filter, which I know that I read a, an article uh, in one of the magazines that, uh, you know, hey, we've got water bowls and fire pots and, and you know, uh, water shooting in the air over here and automation for everything that you can imagine. But the only thing we don't have is an automation system to clean your filter. 
so that really sort of drove me into to you know I think I can make this work. Uh, I'm sort of a hot rod guy. I like to to uh, you know work on on stuff and and uh, so what what I did is I did a little research on you know how to make the whole thing come together and uh, just piece by piece because uh, you know, it's a method. Uh, and, you know, you have to put the water in one location and then you have to figure out where it's going to go and how to, to uh, manage it. And uh, so it was it was quite a task. Uh, we started actually applying them to pools because I am actually a swim pool contractor. And uh, we, we started back in 2019. Um, I couldn't start actually applying them until we had uh, actually submitted for our patent. And uh, as soon as we submitted for our patent, then we were able to install them. And uh, we've installed over 300 of them already. And, uh, you know, and a lot of them with automation, that was my driving force is to figure out how to make it work and try to break it too. <laughs> you know, because if you can break it, then you know what's wrong with it if there's a problem. <laughs> but, um, you know, so that, uh, uh, you know, 2019, so last year, uh, we actually obtained a patent on the method. And uh, now we are a manufacturer also, besides being a builder. So other than the automation side, the big driving factor was also about like saving water when you're cleaning these filters. So it's the water reused from these filter cleanings and environmental protection. You've got areas of the country with severe drought and they have water restrictions. So this is kind of helpful for stuff like that, right? Explain a little bit about that. Yeah, I mean, you know, it, it, California, uh, Nevada, Arizona, Utah, um, I mean, it, it, it's just amazing how little water that we have left. Um, you know, it, it's it's been uh, just continuing. And, and I've lived here for a long, long time, been through numerous droughts, and they tend to run for two, three years, and then it'll rain, and everybody forgets about it. And uh, this one here, you know, this this particular one that we're in the middle of. Uh, that's fact. That's why I even grabbed my uh, my dust bowl hat. You know, I was going. <laughs> you know, we are literally in a dust bowl out here. Um, but uh, you know, the uh, the water savings is a is a big deal. Um, and uh, you know, I I know that with my research, uh, you know, to figure out how to do this method, uh, I realized that that this same type of process has been applied in Australia and South Africa for over 10 years. Uh, so, you know, here in the United States, yeah, I had a gentleman call me and he says, hey, he says, I, I found you uh, through a, an article that was in a, like a this minuscule little spot where Aqua Magazine had written this up for uh, something back in 2019, we first started doing this. And um, he said, I I need your system. He says, I can't believe there's nobody in the United States has it. I said, well, no, there's nobody you know, here that, that's doing it. And um, he was all the way out in, in uh, Virginia where he's buying a house and he couldn't close escrow because the backwash water was dumping in the neighbor's yard. And <laughs> the way the property is designed, it, 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 you know, of course, you can't run into the street. Uh, you know, that's a, that's a big no-no. And um, so, you know, that's... <laughs> well, show us our little graphic in the back and show just tell us about the system with the graphic in the back that'll be kind of cool and show like explain how it works and all the we got a person that joined us and he's going to understand all the technical parts of it and our listeners that are listening afterwards they they're going to love seeing you like explaining that whole picture in the back and how this all works and how it helps the environment after seeing you know how it works then they're going to actually put two and two together you bet <clears throat> no, i do have some screen shares if that's if we're able to do that I guess. yeah we can do we can do that got some actual better better photos that would actually help us uh, to do that but you know you're looking at I, the, yeah just giving you co-host abilities okay. so you should be able to share your screen where we're on the bottom or top and i agree that would be a much better way of showing Thanks for joining us down there, by the way. You bet. I got noisy kids running around, so I'll be on mute. That's completely fine. <laughs> yeah, working from home today. 
And you did do this training for IPSA recently too, right? Uh, I've had, uh, oh, I'm sorry. You, are you talking? Oh, I thought you were talking to me, sorry. No, I was talking to our host. Yeah, uh, yeah I've actually done a couple of, uh, I did uh, two uh, personal site visits. I did one in a city called Pleasant Hill, which is, is over in, in the uh, North Bay area. Uh, here close to San Francisco, and then I did one down in Visalia, which uh, is more down in the Central Valley. And then, of course, then I did another one that was uh, an online, which was um, a Zoom meeting with with a group, and it was very, very interesting. You know, just when I when you when you go 150 miles three different directions, uh, what everybody's thinking. <laughs> you know, <laughs> everybody's got a different. Uh, response and what they're doing and what they have been doing and and uh, you know and that's where it comes to that environmental stuff that that really is a concern to me is is uh, when we start off um, you know with the um, with the uh, trying to protect our environment you know I was realizing that uh, from one group to another uh, one's using us so we have nothing on our routes but cartridge another one says we have nothing on our routes but de and they're like you know well we only do a couple of sand filter i mean everybody and then of course one saying hey you know we just dump the de in the water right on the ground or right in the street we don't you know we oh. that's what, and it, it is just you know and of course i'm i'm not there to say you know you're being bad i said i'm here to educate you that that this is what we need to be looking at and doing because it's going to really change uh rapidly and uh it's the, the water on on this end of the i would say on the this side of the country the water is a driving force but you know i realized that the amount of sedimentation and materials that are in that sediment is a big problem um you know because i think when i think real, what really sort of hit me was when we had the fires here in california last year yeah I mean, we had, <clears throat> I mean, it was so bad. My son, uh, just trying to manage some of our projects out in the field, he uh, almost ended up in the hospital uh, just from breathing the air. Uh, I checked my pod uh, on my pool, which, you know, I was neglecting it because I was, it was automated and, and I'm, you know, busy. And, you know, pool people are, they can, oh, I can fix that anytime. It's like a car guy. <laughs> he'll, he'll drive a car till it just stops on the side of the road and fix it when, when it breaks. But um, I had four to five inches of ash in the bottom of my pod that had been collected, wow. uh, you know, cleaning itself. And, and I know all that material, uh, especially from the fires. Uh, and this is one of our, you can see the screen and, and, and you're, you're seeing mm -hmm. the- uh, We this, can see it. Our, okay. This is one of our original uh, setups. We actually did some model homes for a builder out here and we set them up. They really wanted to have, um, you know, something very, almost self taking care of itself because there's nobody living there and uh so we said okay well that's great you know well, we just come out once a month and check you know check it put a salt system on it uh, but this is a an original uh tank which we used an ag tank uh to uh, capture the material and so the backwash basically backwashes in goes into the to the pod at this this is the tank um, and then of course the water reuse would pull back in and go back to the to, to the pump um, this let me get the better picture so we can see what uh, let's see what we want. that one cool. this is this is what they look like now <clears throat> and this is a a, a fluidra jandy filter sand filter side mount uh, you can definitely use a top mount the difference with the side mount is that you can see that that has the capability of dropping an actuator on if you want to mm -hmm. automate so when it uh, rotates of course it disperses the discharge water into the interior of our pod and that's where it allows the water to sedimentate and so the sedimentation process you know i learned that from a personal friend of mine his uh, parents have a winery out in napa and uh, I'm like, in my mind, I'm like, well, you know, they put wine in barrels and decant it. So, so I called him and I said, hey, I said, I'm, I'm just a pool guy. You know, I, I, I need to have you answer a question. I said, when you guys put the wine in those barrels, how long does it stay in the barrel? 
in my mind, I'm thinking, you know, a week, a month, uh, six months, like whiskey. I, I don't know. I'm, I'm a pool guy. I don't drink wine. <laughs> so he's like, no, 24 hours. He said, it's in the barrels for 24 hours. And he said, we get the wine out of that barrel and clean it and fill it up again. So we got to get that stuff in the bottles and out of here and sell it. And uh, so I was like, wow, if, if, uh, if you can, well, I like to change water into wine. Water should act a lot like wine and it should decant just as, as, as well. And, uh, and we found that to be true. I mean, it only needs to be in that pod for about 24 hours. Um, at that point, the material sedimentates down to this, you know, this lower portion and the water is pulled from here, there's an additional, you can't see it in this picture, I'll show you one in a second, but there's a sludge port, we call it, which is a, a test port uh, where you can actually take a sample of the water even uh, before you turn it back into the pool if, if you're concerned about it. And most of that is just uh, you know, a, a visual thing to me when we're looking at the, uh, the actual water. Um, let's see. So this is actually when we were at uh, Pi in Monterey, and you can see the uh, the additional port down here where you can you can say, well, I want to just I want to want to put all that water into a planter bed or flower bed or in the lawn or something like that. You can't uh, that there's about three gallons of additional water that you'd be able to uh, disperse, and then from the material that's in the action in the bottom of it, you just shot back it out. When we were using the original field tanks, as I call them, uh, the diameter of the opening was only about eight inches. I mean, it was very small. So it was, it was a little bit of a challenge to, to, I mean, but you can do it. You just take a shot back in there and it just takes a little bit more time. So when we designed the mold for our pod, uh, this, this has got a full 30 inch opening in the top. So it's very accessible, which is what I feel makes it just takes two minutes to clean it. So, um, and again, in this picture, you can see where the water hits into the pod. And then of course the reused water, we tie that directly right back into the face of the pump because we want that water to go right back to the filter system. So it's, uh, it's pretty, pretty simple, but, uh, you know, and let me show you, and these are, you know, the, the pictures that most people want to see, I guess, or don't want to see, uh, this is inside the pod. So I walked out a couple of mornings ago and I, my system had, had uh, been in, it, it was in normal setting where it had re, I had backwashed the day before and it was ready to be cleaned again. And you can see the amount of sediment that, that was in the, the actual water. So that's looking about three feet deep in the water. And that's, and when I, looked at the NSF and we were actually looking at NSF right now. We we're, we're in the task group to, to uh, get our certification, uh, but they're only looking for 25% is all they're looking for to be able to get our certification. So we're in pretty good shape on that. But um, this uh, next picture will show you what the water looked like. And of course, everybody knows, you know, how bad the water can be. So, I mean, you can't really see more than about two inches deep. So after 24 hours, it was it was actually, you know, back at that point where we were at before. So that it, it, and so again, we're running that water back through the filter. So we're actually saving all the water. We're not losing any. So we're net zero uh, as far as water waste. The only water we lose is when you're ready to service the pod. And uh, let me show you that picture. So that's when it's drained down and recycled. And you can see that water even above the sediment in the bottom is still clear water. I mean, you could actually still pull that into the pool if you wanted on the skimmer or with a hose or whatever. And uh, then you just shot back it out. And it, it's, it's just very minimal in, in the amount of effort and, and time. And, and, and you're capturing all of that material that as we all know, you know, it's going to have, you know, your algicides and chlorine and acids and all the things that you, you don't want to, you know, to be going into our environment because when you're back flushing uh, and you're sending it to the gutters or in, even to the landscape drain, then it ends up going out to the gutter and into the, what they call MS4 systems, which go to your streams and rivers and, and, um, and as, as, 
I have found by doing some research, you know, when you look at these, when you're cleaning filters, you know, they say that, you know, it's, it's important, uh, you know, to have a backwash discharge flow through a separation tank, which, you know, we've all done that. And of course had them blow out and go into a pool, but, or a sediment trap, which basically that's what we have. So we have a sediment trap and uh, it's, it's, it, if you run it into a uh, directly into a sewer clean out, uh, it it has a possibility of clogging that line or backing it up into the homeowner's house. And uh, you know we've we've actually had that happen before. Um, over my years of experience, uh, we were cleaning out a pool that was ready to be plastered, and the the clean out crew stuck it in the sewer line and kicked the sump pump on, and too much velocity and in the in the home it goes. So after replacing a, a hardwood floor in a, in a living room, we, we realized that it was probably not the best approach. <clears throat> but uh, it's definitely been an issue for um, everybody. And uh, the, the uh, and again, going over the, the things that are in that sediment, that pollution, there's a lot of things. And, and most of the stuff that I referenced to is, is directly from, you know, the... Uh, BMPs, which is your best management practice, is that all of these uh, water management uh, government agencies uh, put out. Uh, you know, we we know that that um, pools tend to be, I would say, not really recognized too much because they're in a backyard. Mm -hmm. It's almost like Vegas. What happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. What happens <laughs> in the pool stays in a pool type. You know, in a backyard. <laughs> it's uh, it's something that's pretty, uh, uh, but it is relevant in what we're doing. And uh, and just to give you, a, again, the, that process is just as simple as it can be. Uh, that's how it works. Uh, we have a proprietary mold for our pod. And uh, so, you know, because I, I didn't like the ag tanks. They were very cumbersome and, and not comfortable. And uh, so we actually had a mold made and uh, we have the, the tanks available now uh, we just launched at the pie show it almost reminds me kind of the process with a septic tank system because you have everything going out to a septic tank and then you're doing separation of solids from liquid before it goes out to a drain field this is just not going to a drain field it's after it's separated it's going back to the pool system which is cool well, you know, the it, it is that same type of concept. Uh, the difference being is that, that what what really sort of you know brought attention to me was was the water that is coming out of the pool. The service tech, you know, has already spent a lot of time in balancing that water, trying to get that pool where it's supposed to be. And when you take two, three hundred gallons of water and you dump it out of the pool on the ground. Uh, which has all of the stuff in it you don't want on the ground, but you also have to add fresh water back to the, the system, which messes up your balance. And then you got to add more chemicals. And uh, so with a media or DE filter, you know, we're actually capturing the DE or sediments and we're allowing you to keep that pretreated water. And that that way you're you're not spending more on balancing and chemicals. So it's going to actually be better for the service tech, keep the cost down more, and uh, and make so, it really easy. So this can be used on like a vacuum DE type system as well. Like in place of having a DE separation tank, you could have this on the system, and then is that DE powder going to uh, settle at the bottom as the precipitate? Yep. And then what would you do after that? Would you still want a DE separator tank, separation tank after that when you're removing the DE? Like, how, how, what's your recommendation on the removal of the DE, DE from that bottom of the tank? And how often should you be cleaning out that precipitate on the bottom? Well, it's, it's funny, you know, because with a separation tank, the one thing, and when I was actually at the JC meeting with the um, NSF Joint Committee, uh, only one person raised their hand and said, I don't know if you can do this or not, you know, because you're sending that water back to the pool that, that, and, and that's 
back of worse water. <clears throat> and I said, well, let me ask you a question. I said, I've been doing this for 45 years. And I said, every DE filter I've ever dealt with, when you're back washing, the water goes back to the pool. It goes to a separation tank and goes back to the pool. It doesn't go back to the filter. It goes back to the pool. I said, now with this process, we're actually capturing the water. And when we capture it, then you're able to go back into your filter mode and you're able to recharge the filter. And when that water is ready to be reused, you're able to filter that water with your backwash material. So if you had any DE that, that had not uh, gone to the very bottom that, that precipitates, then it would just be, it'd go back in the filter. So it would still be fine, you know. I, I think I'm thinking Florida based. That's why, because you're in California and maybe you're talking more like Florida. I'm thinking public pools too here in Florida. We have a lot of vacuum. DE systems. And so when they go to backwash their vacuum DE filter, they're backwashing and all that backwash water goes through a DE separation tank first. And then a bag inside collects all their spent DE. Right. And then the backwash water is actually going to waste. Okay. So it's not going back to the pool because floor, I guess Florida rule just doesn't allow that. So then they take that bag out of the DE separation tank. They put it in a garbage bag and send it to the landfill. A lot right. of times you get them dumping it on the ground next to the pool equipment area, which I can't write up. When I was a health inspector, I couldn't write that up because I didn't work for the environmental protection people. I worked for the health department where, where you regulate the pool, you're not regulating the environment part. So it's kind of frustrating. The equipment's there, they're using it, but what they do with it, I, I, I could you know, forward that as a complaint to the other state agency and hope that the other state agency goes, I care about DE powder on the, on the ground there. And they have bigger fish to fry a lot of times, you know, so that's where I was going. Um, I didn't realize like some of your private pools, they do that, but then it's going back to the pool here in Florida. It does not. It's usually our wastewater is going to waste, but I think this is really interesting because like six months or eight months ago, I had um, local people in Florida that actually worked for like an environmental protection type uh, agency for a county. So they're county employees and right. they are just starting to become aware of the pool industry and what you guys do. They're, they're trying to learn all the processes that go on in a pool between pool builders and even service companies. They have no idea like what you dispose of. It should this be disposed of into the lake or into a stormwater drain. So I think that the environmental protection people in some states or counties are kind of behind on the pool industry is that unknown industry to a lot of these inspectors and they're becoming more educated. Um, I know I told them, go to your local pool trade show coming up uh, here in Florida. You'll learn more from the trade than you, and then you'll know what you're looking for once you start getting into the trade and you learn exactly what the processes are. And she's like, I'm going. But this is right along with that whole idea there because you're not, they would love this because they would see as this collecting all, and you're not putting all those chemicals. Some of homeowner pools in Florida are going incorrectly into lakes and then they get called in when there's fish or turtle kills. And there's more than one, obviously that they're going out and somebody noticed it and they're trying to figure out, I mean, the big thing that they hone in on is like acid washes and then they're not, uh, you know, putting in bicarb or anything to kind of neutralize it before they dispose the water. But then you get into resurfacing and blue water going out to a stormwater drain and stuff. They're like, what's in that? They have no idea because they don't know what resurfacing is. <laughs> so this is a very interesting topic that you're talking about. And this is just awesome just to see this for environmental and just knowing where things are going and the industry is becoming more well known. So that's what the traditional thing that we'd see, the blue hose. Yep. Yeah. Well, I, I know that uh, you know, you in in a commercial application, and, and of course my mind, I always think of residential first because there are a lot more residential pools out there. 
Uh, and that's the way all of them have already always been done, where you would just back backwash through a separation tank and you plumb it right back in and the water go back in the pool. Uh, definitely this system will work with that vacuum to a separation tank, and then we could capture the water and allow it to precipitate and then decant out, and then they could make a decision by testing the, the quality of the water and let it go back into the pool or dispose of it, you know, depending on how, you know, what the condition of it is. At least they would know what the condition of it is instead of it just going out into a river or lake or, you know, a pond or, uh, you know, clean out because uh, that that's, I think, what, you uh, you know, is is a big issue um, to to me is that where that water goes, and then of course you've got the other side of the coin. You know, where you have the the uh, the guys that have the cartridges, and and uh, this is a clip from a, or a photo from a, a YouTube video where a guy has ninety seven thousand hits of thank you how you know thank you for showing us how to do this, and um, you know you can see the the oil slick, you know, or, or sediment slick going down the driveway. And, and, um, it's, it's a, it's not good. Um, you know, so, and I was actually, I was on the phone with a gentleman from the California pool spa association. Uh, and, uh, he's you know, explaining what we have here. And of course his response, he says, man, he says, Harold, that's great. He says, but he said, do you have anything for a cartridge filter? Cause I have a cartridge filter. And I'm like, oh, got it. You know, here I just, I solved half of our industry problem. <laughs> <laughs> and, you, and you're not happy. I said, well, let me, let me think about it. So here I, again, I get my dust bowl hot rod hat on. And, uh, and then I, I came up with um, a, a different way of, of actually uh, handling where we have our, our, um, our cartridge pod. Uh, so it's designed uh, to actually, it's the exact same product, but it's set up differently to where it has a, a sieve with a mesh on it for the cartridge to sit on. And you're able to clean the cartridge right in that location. Uh, we went to one of my, uh, actually one of my employees' homes. Uh, we gave him a call, said, hey, we're going to come over your house and clean your filter. So we know you haven't changed yours, even though we gave you a new setup, you haven't changed it yet. He said, no, I haven't done it yet. I said, okay. So we get there and he says, you know, I just cleaned this like four days ago. I'm like, well, we're going to do it anyway. So we, uh, we went through and, and cleaned all four cartridges. Uh, I had a, a counter on the hose and I was able to figure out that it took about anywhere from 18 to 20 gallons of water per cartridge to be able to clean them. And with the cartridges already being cleaned, we still pulled about two and a half pounds of sediment out of them because we realized the water had that same look as the one at my house after I backwashed. And uh, besides that, there was probably a, a, a sandwich baggie full of uh, floating material that ended up in the mesh on the top that we're able to, to capture. So, you know, the, uh, the cartridge industry, of course, has always, uh, and I, you know, I, I'm not going to throw anybody under the bus, but I mean, <clears throat> you know, They've always said that they save, you know, buy cartridge to save water. Um, you know, with with this method, uh, you know, that's fresh water. So there's 80 gallons of fresh water that's going on the ground at least, uh, and if not more. And um, you know, and that that was uh, what we counted up. And with this type of a setup, then you're able to again do the same thing. You can make a decision if you if the water is cleared and in good condition. Uh, then you can make the decision if you want to run it back to your skimmer or if you want to run it in your planter beds. And being fresh water, uh, it's not going to hurt any flowers or anything. It's, a lot of people have salt water pools, so the pool water, that's a decision you have to think about. Um, but uh, And the one other thing that we added to this is we actually have a rainwater connection for it, so it actually can be tied into uh, a, a downspout so you've got capture uh, cistern capability uh, for rainwater. Uh, so again try to make it more than just one thing you know and uh, so and what I learned because I, I do have a, a robotic pool cleaner in my pool uh, and it's the design that has a, it's like a, a dolphin model through Pentair uh, has the cartridges in it 
and it, it, it picks up a lot of stuff and that actually gives me a place to clean that also because uh, it, it, it it's a mess. I mean, and, and that was what I found with a lot of these uh, service people that we were dealing with at the IPSA meetings is they said, well, we, we've got this really, really high level customer that their property is just so pristine. Uh, there's no place to clean anything, you know. We go in the planter beds and we get yelled at. We go over in the lawn and we get yelled at. And I said, well, this is what you need. You need a designated location where you're capturing all the materials and then you just bring a shop back and clean it out. It takes a few minutes. It takes two minutes to back wash, two minutes to recycle the water. You know, that, that's it, it's about as simple as you can get. And, uh, you know, the, uh, the cartridge process, uh, you know, again, that was one of those things because I was asked to come up with something and, and uh, um, you know, uh, I'm pretty happy with the way it turned out. Now, let's see, oh, this, this is probably one of those things that uh, really sort of shows you there's, there's differences. You know, we got 50 different states and 50 different ways to, you know, deal with things, it seems like. Uh, but, you know, when I read this part, you know, down here where it it says it's against the law, and the, you could be fined up to twenty five thousand. That's fish and game. That's not that's not your local health department or anything like that. Uh, so that's a pretty serious, you know. That, that's not going to be a happy time. And uh, at those IPSA meetings uh, in at Pi, we've had several service people said that they got uh, they they were at the one thousand dollar level on fines uh, for you know discharging into the gutter or it got caught and uh, it just gets worse. It doesn't get better. And I think that, uh, you know, with our industry, we need to really look at this. Uh, and, and that that's, that was my motivating factor on it uh, is to, to try to provide a way to protect our environment. So we don't have all this stuff getting out there. Cause you know, when you look at the, the things that, that we're dealing with, um, you know, the algicides and the, chlorines and acids and everything has an effect you know and, and for swimming pools you don't want algae growing but you, in your streams and stuff it's a, it, you have to have it that's what the animals feed on and they they lay their eggs in and it's it's just a it's an environment you know when you destroy that environment it's going to affect everybody and, and uh, we don't want it to affect our affect our industry because you know with, with water loss, uh, you know, uh, right now you know, the, the legislature here in California, uh, our our attorney for PHCA, I mean, their answer is to cover your pool. That, that's what they say, you know, cover your pool. Well, when it's I think we about three four weeks ago, it was 112 degrees here. You know, no, nobody's going to cover their pool. With, you know, it, that's when you that's when you have all the water losses when the heat's up. But um, so we're we're uh, we're pretty confident that that this is the way to save water, uh, and you know that that benefit of being able to capture all of that material is is a big deal too. That's a nice document there. Yeah, it's actually uh, Sonoma County. I mean, it's uh, and that's just one of many that I've collected. Uh, this one was very. Well I'll put together. That's why I grabbed it just to be able to sort of show you that uh, uh, it, it, and it's not just here. I mean, I, I've searched all over the United States and go to different cities. And the funny thing is, is you know, we we deal. We're, we're a builder, so we go get a permit, and uh, the building department they don't care. They, they you know, just you just have to keep the pool far enough away from the house, and you have to have your engineering, and and you have to have your gates closed, that kind of stuff, um, and of course, with residential, the health department does never go there. And um, the only thing that we have now is uh, our local city actually hired, uh, besides letting policemen go, they've hired uh, uh, water patrol and set up water patrol cars. And, and they say if the water hits the gutter and is running for more than between three to five minutes, it's an automatic fine. And uh, that could be sprinklers, it could be anything. And you go to worship. Uh, cartridge or, or a DE filter out or a sand filter, you're going to get it, you know, it's going to happen. And uh, so, you know, uh, we know that, that it's, 
it's really it's these guys here these the stormwater people are the ones that that uh, i've been talking to we did a a, a workshop for the stormwater um, awareness week it was uh, swaw uh, and uh, you know it was it goes pretty deep when they because they they specifically say nothing down the drain but rain and that is it and, mm -hmm. and their eyebrows raise up when they realize what's coming out of these pool filters so uh, yeah yeah like i mean where i live here in florida a lot of our stormwater drains on the coastline goes straight to our indian river lagoon and so all these chemicals and algicides and everything from we had a public it, it alerted me when we had a complaint it was a pool technician um, was sending their filter backwash to the stormwater drain and they're right I mean along the Indian River Lagoon it goes straight out to the lagoon so um, we had to get Department of Environmental Protection involved the local county involved um, because it was beyond my purview at that point so yeah it, our lagoon is very like you said fish plants it's a whole ecosystem that's affected and so the swimming pool is where you want these chems at but you don't want to be feeding that water with those chemicals you're using into a fresh body of water that's going to affect the other critters that don't need algicides and all that other stuff in there yeah, and then uh, I know they they say well, to you know maybe run it to a uh, sewer clean out, but there are so many saltwater pools out there now uh, that concerns me too, because you know we don't have desalination plants. You know it, it's not uh, they they don't have a way to get the salt out of the water. Uh, we we installed a, a one of our projects uh, for a client out here that uh, he was a farmer and he says he says I can't believe that. All of, he had like six bids, and he said, "You guys are the only ones that actually were able to tell me how you're going to keep my my wife's need for a salt system from killing my tree." And he said, "Because you know, right now the the saline level in the water is somewhere probably around 10, 15 percent already." He says, "I don't need to be killing my mine and my neighbors' trees," you know. And uh, so he was very appreciative that we had the system. And uh, it, it, it helps uh, in that respect, you know, if, if a, uh, a builder decides to uh, to use our system, uh, it is a it is a benefit. It, it, and I think that, you know, my my hope is that uh, we would be able to get this applied to any and every pool out there. Just and, and it's not a monetary thing. It's because I am an environmentalist. And I believe in, in uh, you know, what we're doing. Uh, I don't need a new home. I don't need more cars. My wife says I don't need more cars. <laughs> I've got plenty of hot rods. Um, but, uh, you know, I've done this a long time. And I think our, our industry uh, is on a borderline of, of being, you know, how would you say it, uh, just regulated. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, and if we don't, step forward and take the right steps, uh, it's going to be a problem. I, I totally agree with you, Harold. I think that the industry has grown so much compared to what it was even before COVID that it's being noticed now by agencies like this outside of just the health department doing public pool inspections. Now you've got people looking at environmental impacts from an, a growing industry. And I agree with you, the industry, it would be way better if the industry got in front of it before the regulators do and be part of the conversation with the regulators. I, I kind of understand this because I worked for the health department and worked in multiple programs. So we in Florida until like a decade ago did never regulated tattoo artists, totally different industry. But what I'm trying to bring into example really quick is the health department was looking at regulating and the tattoo guild, which is all the professional tattooers, got in front of it and they got with the Department of Health and they worked on the regulatory code together to make it sane for what you're doing. Because right. the regulators don't always understand everything in the industry. So if the industry and the regulating agency work together then you have a better outcome that isn't going to drive all of us in industry crazy. That's right. <laughs> you know, so I agree with you. 
that no, it, is, it is being noticed. Yeah, there was 17,000 new pools built in California last year. Jeez. I mean, so it's it's just wow. pretty stunning, you know, when you start running the numbers. I mean, you know, when, when I calculate, uh, you know, the water savings, uh, we're averaging about uh, 5,000 gallons per pool per year, That's which is stunning. You know, that we, is wonderful. And then, of course, when we go into a, uh, which I, I wanted to get the NSF certification first, uh, we're, and we're, again, we're in the task group right now, so we're not that far off from, from getting our cert. It's going to be NSF 50. And uh, then we will say, hey, now we can actually apply that to a commercial pool. And then we got a lot of requests for that because, you know, the guys say, man, I'm cleaning these things twice a week. I have to. And, they, you know, uh, and the one thing that can be done is that I, when I designed our pod is I made sure that it would fit through a door. Uh, it has to fit through a door because, you know, I've seen a lot of indoor equipment rooms. Um, I like them outdoors, but they're, they're indoors. The great thing about this is, is literally is you can actually daisy chain them. You can actually put multiple pods. If you have a larger pool and you need to, to your back worst time, you say, no, I've got to, I got to run a thousand gallons. Okay. Well, we'll just, Stack them up, you know, and then you can daisy chain them out and capture the water. It's got your your test port on where you can see what the quality of the water is before you release it, and um, and it's they have a, a good nice sealed lid on them to where you're not have to worry about you know critters getting in them and it's ventilated. It's not under pressure, so there's no no uh, danger of something bursting or anything like that. You know, it's it's about as simple as you can get. And, um, you know, in automation for a commercial pool, I probably wouldn't recommend, you know, because if you've got somebody that's an operator, they're going to know exactly what to do. And, um, you know, the, the remote controls haven't really caught up yet. Uh, you know, the, the things that you, when you start playing with a remote system, you start realizing, you say, well, this thing will only, only, it only has a seven day clock. I can't, I can't tell it to do it every two weeks. It's got to do it at least once a week is all I can do. Uh, when I originally set mine up, I had it actually back washing every day. Uh, I go out with my coffee in the morning, have my coffee, and stand there and watch it do it. And say, like, go for clean. And I realized that uh, you know the water pressure, you know the filter, the filter was clean, so the 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 flow was always there. We we stopped getting the phone calls. Of, about heaters not firing when they try to use a spa. Uh, we got stopped getting the phone calls about the pool cleaners not moving like they're supposed to, again, because the filter is clean. Um, yeah, and of course, now we, we, we really like the robotics cleaners, uh, you know, just based on the, the function. And at that point, when you have a robotics cleaner, you know, we, wrap, we actually set our pools up to all run in low speed all the time. You know, there's no reason to have the thing jamming, you know, because you're not trying to, unless you're doing a water feature or run a spa, that's the only time you need to have it kick on to, to ramp up. So it keeps the energy cost down, uh, keeps your chemical cost down because, again, you're not losing the water and your filter's clean. As you can imagine, you know, when you saw that material, all of that precipitate in the bottom of the pod, that's in the filter. Every time it's you know, then, until somebody cleans it and it's in there. And and I, I know everybody that's tore a cartridge filter apart. That's why they have that port on the bottom to be able to rinse it out because all the crud's sitting on the bottom. Pressure and, D uh, filter, pressure D filters too, right? Uh, and sand filters, you know, we we've gone a little bit uh I don't know if you've ever heard of it or not, uh, and we're not a uh, you know, we don't sell the material we actually apply it because when i was going through the method i was looking at, at again I, I like simplicity uh so i came across a product called afm i don't know if you've heard of that or not the uh, afm is actually a um, uh, it comes out of switzerland and it is a uh, an upcycled glass media that is negatively charged and uh, it's used in the marine aquatics industry uh, and we have the the thing that really led me to it is when they said that you don't have to replace it. And I know a lifetime warranty, you know, here in California, a lifetime warranty is seven years. Or something. But seven years, that's pretty good. 
uh, the manufacturer says that they anticipate somewhere between uh, 15 to 20 years is how long they'll last. So if I don't have to tear a sand filter apart, <clears throat> damage all of the laterals and, and all of the mess and hassle and everything, and when I backwash, we actually backwash in low speed because the velocity, you, you, you don't have to hammer the thing like you do with sand because it's all negatively charged. It's, it's like trying to push two magnets together that are repelling. So when you kick it in, the, we're, we're, I think we're at 43 gallons a minute when we backwash. Again, we're, we're saving electricity. It's simple. Uh, you don't have to replace it. And it's, they say it's self-sanitizing because it can't biofoul. It's been cooked at like 2,200 degrees. So the material is so hard, nothing penetrates it. So it doesn't end up, you know, like sand is porous. So it gets algae built right in, into it, uh, just like a pool surface will. But that material doesn't. And if you get the opportunity to go and watch their video uh, of their manufacturing plant. It is amazing. It's uh, fully sustainable. And I like stuff that that is, as they say, you know, uh, reuse and, uh, you know, is, is where it's at. Uh, you know, when we see all of the waste of everything that's out there, uh, I, I like things that we don't have to continually replace. Awesome. So anything else you want to, you know, like how often do you service the pod? How difficult it is? Have, have we covered that yet? Well, it's, you know, the, the, the funny thing is, is, you know, again, looking at some of the, the uh, information that came out of Australia and, and uh, South Africa, <clears throat> they, they say every four years. And I was like, okay. Yeah, that's quite a while. I mean, I know Cadillac said that they had spark plugs that never had to be replaced, and I was like, I don't believe that either. Um, but you know, the the uh, what what we typically do is we look at uh, we recommend you know looking inside, and it only takes two minutes to clean it, so it's not like it's a big hassle. Um, so whenever you're uh, when you do backwash, if there is material in the bottom, then of course it goes back into turbidity, and then it's got to go through the settling process again. So if you if you say, well, I'll do it once a month or once every six months, uh, you know, I know with 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 the fires, uh, mine it actually went for a full year before I actually cleaned the pod. Wow! But, but it's really simple to do. So you know, I probably clean mine a couple times a week because it's again we got the dust bowl going on here. Uh, they just I've got. Uh, almonds all around my property and they just harvested the almonds and they stir up just it's like you ever seen the pig pen on charlie brown it's like that around here that you know my dogs even though they're black dogs they're all tan <laughs> from the dirt <laughs> so so my pool gets it and uh but it's it, it's amazing you know because i look at the pool and it's clean and uh it's all in the filter and uh, so that's why, you know, I pay really close attention to what comes out of it. And, uh, and it's, you know, and, and I know we had talked about uh, the DE being in the pod. Um, of course, DE is always something, I mean, here in California, it's actually you know, classified as a carcinogen uh, because it is silica. And, and uh, <clears throat> you know, my understanding is, is that like the, the uh, coal mines, uh, when they have, guys that were breathing all of that material, they have what they call black lung. And in the pool industry, they've actually referred to it as white lung from pool guys that were breathing diatomaceous earth. Um, so <clears throat> when, when we're capturing the material, there it, it is in a solution of water. Uh, so it's not gonna go airborne. I think that's what would concern me. Uh, so when you shot back it out, it ends up in the shot back and you can actually pour it into a, to a, a container and allow the water to, you know, evaporate out and dispose of it. <clears throat> Pretty simple, you know, but it's just a, it's just a different way of managing of how you deal with it. You know, again, trying to follow the, those BMPs, you know, those best management practices to, to apply to what we do. So everybody's sort of going down the same path to not only make our jobs easier, make our product work better, make the customers happier, but also uh, keep the uh, 
all the little our little friends you know the turtles and mm -hmm. the fish and everybody happy and and uh, you know try to protect everything so it sounds like a win-win situation trying putting uh something into the you know equipment doing this um it helps the environment helps uh save water especially in drought prone areas where there's water restrictions i had heard about like near austin texas they were like P building pools, but then the people couldn't fill their pool with water because of right. water restrictions and stuff like that. So this it kind of yeah, goes right along with what certain parts of the country are going to be probably <laughs> dealing with for a, a long time here. I don't think that the drought issues are going to go away anytime soon. So any water reuse that can happen and you can, you know, say, hey, it's environmentally uh, protecting the environment at the same time. I mean, that's two great reasons right there. Well, the, I mean, it's it's going to rain. I mean, we we've been praying for it, uh, and you know, a lot of times, like I said, when it rains, every so oh, it's okay. The drought's over; it'll be back. You know, I mean, they they say that the 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 drought that we're incurring right now is a twelve hundred year drought. You know, so uh, it's it's definitely uh, you know we have to really focus on on the application of what we do from now on. Uh, just because it's raining doesn't mean that, that we shouldn't be. If you don't need to save the water, then that's great, you know, but it'll be back. And the time will come and say, man, I wish I had done that. And, and that's uh, that's what our target is, is just to, to try to keep it to where protecting everybody. So I know you said, we had talked before and you said you're gonna be at a show coming up. Yes. Yeah. What We're, show are you going to be at and what days? And is there a booth number that people can go visit you at or anything like that? Yeah, we're going to be at the uh, Pool Spa Expo. Uh, it's the uh, one in uh, Vegas, Las Vegas, PSP Expo. The national show, right? right. Or the, inter the international yeah. show, actually. Right. International yep. in Las Vegas. What dates are is that again for everybody to kind of remember? Just to make sure I'm telling you the right thing. I mean, the actual uh, interior where you can actually walk around because they have classes for you know the, for the week. But the uh, November fifteenth, sixteenth, and seventeenth is the actual uh, on the floor show dates. Awesome. Visit us. And what um, booth? Do you know what booth number you're going to be at at the international show? Yeah, it's uh, forty five, forty six. 45 46 so are you going to have the system there for them to be able to see at the booth like kind of set up yep yeah we'll have a display and uh, you know we'll be able to sort of walk you through all the details of how you know how it installs how simple it is and and again you know the the plumbers can make it really difficult so if you look at the simplicity that's how you have to think of it is keep it simple and then life is always simple i know a lot of people mention about how large the pod is it's actually the same footprint of, as the filter it's a it's 28 inches at the bottom the 30 inches at the top where the lid is um, and it's I, i've focused on the height of it because i've had a lot of customers complain about like a 580 filter being you know they're like i'm looking out the window and i see the filter you know it's, it, it, we, in california the yards are so small uh, so we're right at 40 inches so it'd be right at the bottom of a windowsill so it's try to, to focus on on keeping it compact uh, and that's probably the difference in in what we found uh, with a lot of the, the things that are not here in america is is they uh, uh, are i think one of them is using a 650 gallon you know tank um, and we're, we're, we're in a hundred gallons and that's where we need to be at and it works perfect. You know? Awesome. And it, it, I see your website is there. So it's bestclearsystem.com. They can find more information and, okay. um, probably contact infos on the website as well. Yes. So uh, this video will be posted on the YouTube channel as well, but go visit him in this awesome system at the international show in las vegas guys if you're going to that international show it's just you you might walk past this booth and not really know what it was all about if you watch this video you kind of get that heads up 
now you can go see that system in person at the international show. And it's coming up in November, not too far away. So it's been wonderful talking with you, Harold. Yeah, on our website, we'll be posting where we're going to be at different locations as time passes. So that way, if they don't attend that show, then then definitely maybe we'll be closer to them at some point in time. But yeah, I really appreciate it. It was uh, very gracious of you to, to invite me to, to meet with you. I appreciate it. Oh, it's awesome to have something new, something educational to bring to the industry put it forth in front of a different audience so that hopefully if they weren't aware of something like this, that they're aware of it now. And maybe you'll get some calls or emails or something like that. Just, you know, asking about the system and they may have more questions. Um, Thank you so much for being on today, Harold. And thank you for all the listeners uh, listening into this uh, training today. Thank you so much.